Friends, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Mayong gabi ka ninyong tanan. Maray na banggi po sa inyong gabos. Welcome to Thy Love and Thy Grace, an online concert. This is a prayer concert initiated by the Center for Ignatian Spirituality Philippines to celebrate the Ignatian year, commemorating the 500th year of St. Ignatius of Loyola's conversion. We shall be treated shortly to an evening of songs and prayers. As we all know, music has this unique capacity to unpack the most mysterious of human and religious experiences. Arranged according to the thematic structure of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, week one, dealing on God's love and man's sinfulness, week two, contemplating Jesus, His life and His mystery, week three, passion and death of the Lord, and week four, His own resurrection. The songs that you will hear tonight are modest attempt at tracing the journey of Saint Ignatius, a man totally obsessed with himself, to a man inflamed with the love of God, a man confident and free It is our hope that these same songs will recall for you your own stories of conversion, renewing your love for God and neighbor. Leading us in this solemn exercise is a group of talented individuals, Jesuit priests, scholastics, and lay friends comprising the Hime Gesuita under the direction of Father Arnal Aquino S.J. May this night be another occasion to experience His love and His grace. Serve you. 
God is love, and God loves us. Such powerful words. But we must admit, for some, this statement is quite absurd, even cruel to insist at the time when we remain in a terrible pandemic. God is love, and God loves us, is a declaration that seems to contradict what we see during these dark days, when lies and misinformation abound in social media and just about anywhere, when unscrupulous politicians are once again grabbing center stage to perpetuate themselves in power, when self-serving policies and practices plunder our common home at the great expense of the poor, when the economics of exclusion forces us to see each other as competing strangers and not compassionate neighbors. In such situations, it's easy to fall into the trap of cynicism and despair. We forget that God is indeed love and that He truly loves us. Too tired, too timid, too scared, we focus on just staying alive and fail to see who really is keeping us alive. God. God is not a sadistic and distant deity. Our God of love chooses to be with us and He has never abandoned us. By God's merciful intervention through His Son, God has entered the very depths of the messiness of our beings. In His Son's loving offering of His life, suffering and death have lost their power to enslave us. They no longer have the last word in our lives. From where sin has dragged us, God has redeemed us. God has transformed suffering and death itself into an occasion, a testimony of undying love and new life. Professing that God is love and God loves us is not mouthing empty slogans. In faith, we say these words as the reason for our being. In hope, we embrace these words as a promise guaranteed by the cross of Christ and His glorious resurrection. In charity, we hear these words as an invitation to proclaim the good news to all. Truly, when we assert that God is love and God loves us, we also affirm that we have been crucified with Him who lives in us. And the life which we now live, we live by faith in God, who loved us first and gave Himself up for us. And so, strong in faith, resilient in hope, 
let us forever sing of the goodness of the Lord and confess that God is love and all who dwell in love will live. Exaltation, you have said, My kindness is forever. In heaven, you've confirmed your love. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing of your love. Forever will I sing. I will be your God. I'll remain my kindness to Him forever, and my promise stand firm. I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Forever, I will sing of Your love, and I will sing of Your We have 
voice, O oh God, and we have heard your singing. We have held you in our hands in the love we
God loves us into being and gives us everything. As Jesuit spiritual writer Father Florencio Segura wrote, God bestows on us our capability to do good and to love, all our opportunities, benefits, and possibilities, and His gifts, His grace, His love. God's only hope is that we use all this in service of Him and others. After realizing with deep gratitude that all is gift, we are led to ask ourselves, what have we done with God's tremendous and generous gifts? How have we responded to His tremendous love? As we reflect on our response, we may find ourselves filled with shame, realizing how we may have drifted from what God hoped us to be. We strut with pride, consumed by our successes and what we have acquired. We are arrogant and judgmental of others who are less capable or less intelligent. We push away those who are dear to us in our desire not to be vulnerable, to shield ourselves from getting hurt. We become so self-absorbed that we lose empathy and compassion towards others. Many times, we want to be good and to be more loving, but we are shackled by the same superficiality, selfishness, and even injustice that we so abhor in others. But God, in His loving mercy, reminds us that we are made for Him, that our very purpose is to be with Him forever, and that we are nothing without Him. We are jolted, perhaps, by our own cannonball, a family crisis, a debilitating illness, an experience of failure, or the loss of a loved one, especially during this pandemic. We are saddened to see how we have turned away from God. But by His grace, we are able to open ourselves to His mercy and healing. We remember the words of the psalmist in Psalm 103, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. St. Ignatius asks us to stand before Christ crucified, to look at Him who shares our pain. Jesus on the cross invites us, if we want, to be transformed giving us so many chances to change, but always respecting our freedom. We are moved to open ourselves to His love once again, and steeped in His love, we can accept our own limitedness and woundedness, so that, in turn, we can learn to love like Him. And so we dare to ask ourselves, what have I done for Christ? What am I doing for Christ? What ought I to do for Christ? you all my life my 
Among 
maha bagin Tumagpot, lumayumay Ikaw ay talitan Kamay ko yung tangan Walang ibang To see the face of God is my heart's desire. 
to gaze upon the Lord is my one desire. All these years, the lyrics of this song has become a mantra in my ministry. Thanks to the formation I received from the Jesuits of the Loyola School of Theology in the Ateneo and the San Jose Seminary. I can still recall the topic for my synthesis paper for comprehensives. It was on St. Ignatius's Ed Cud Volo. It was about our deepest desires for God and God's desire for us. It has been nine years of priesthood for me, and basically what makes a difference in my life is what the Jesuits taught me. They mentored me to see, to see God in everything, to see God in the daily. To see may come natural as breathing, but the Jesuits offered a kind of seeing that is a whole lot more. It is a kind of seeing life under a different light. In particular, they've initiated me into seeing the priestly ministry with eyes of newness daily. This came from my own experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. I was diagnosed positive with COVID-19 last May 20. I was quarantined and later was rushed to the hospital for treatment. My ferritin level was up and doctors were wary of me given the dangers of a possible blood clot or stroke. The isolation facility was a lonely place. Much as I would like to relate with any human that came every four hours to my room, my efforts most of the time were utter failures. Getting even their names right was quite a challenge for they were like astronauts in their PPEs. They practically looked the same. Nevertheless, days passed and I managed. Yes, thank God I survived my bout with COVID. The experience gave me another lesson. I realized I was not that strong as I believed I was. As a minister who has been used to ministering people, God in the isolation facility allowed me to be ministered to. Through the doctors, nurses, and janitors in PPEs, I heard the most comforting words to keep fighting and going. All shall be well, Father became their common refrain. By the time I was discharged from the hospital, this refrain has become a conviction. All shall be well, and is well indeed. For finally, the minister has allowed himself to be also ministered to. Jesus was there. Yes, I saw him behind the PPEs. After all, the body of Christ, our church, is supposed to be a ministering community. We are all called and are supposed to minister to one another, laity and priest, in the name of Christ. With the outpouring of prayers and support from priests, religious lay organizations, faith communities, capillans and the parishes, and all people of goodwill, I have regained my strength and is now ever more ready to face another chapter of my priestly life. Nine years and counting, and I still have a lot to learn. I still have a lot to see and discover with God. For all the lessons seen and learned, I am grateful and deeply indebted to my spiritual and pastoral mentors, the Jesuits. Allow me then this privilege to be one with you in this year's celebration of 500 years of Ignatius. I, together with the countless recipients of your ministries, thankful for the Ignatian legacy and presence in our own lives. Madamo nga salamat, walang hanggang pasasalamat, mga tagahubog na Hesuita.
Dwell in the house of the Lord. 
shepherd There is nothing I shall want
Isang araw, nagtanong sa akin ng isang mag-aaral, Padre, 
Nasaan ba ang kalooban ng Diyos? Isang tanong na mahirap sagutin. Isang tanong na ayaw kong itanong sa Diyos sapagkat natatakot ako sa katotohanan. Baka hindi ko kayanin. Baka masaktan ako. Ngunit buong tapang ko sinabi, Hanapin mo ang lugar na may pinakamalalim na dilim, pinakamalalim na sugat, pinakamalalim na gutom, pinakamalalim na kawalan ng pag-asa, pinakamalalim na pag-uusig at pag-iisa, mga lugar na tila wala ang Diyos. Hanapin mo ang lugar na ito at doon mo matatagpuan ang kalooban ng Diyos. Hinahanap natin lagi ang kalooban ng Diyos. Alam natin na ito ang makabubuti at makapagpapasaya sa atin. Ngunit madalas, takot tayong magtanong kay Yesus kung nasaan ang kalooban niya. Sa ating kubling malay, alam natin ang magaganap sa pagsunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. Kutub natin at base sa ating karanasan, laging kakambal ng kalooban ng Diyos ang habdi, sugat, sakripisyo, luha, pag-iisa, kawalan, pangangapa, pagbitiw, dilim at kamatayan. Ngunit kailan ba ako pinabayaan ng Diyos? Kailan ba niya ako iniwan? Hindi ko matandaan. Mas natatandaan ko pa kung kailan ko siya iniwanan dahil ako'y natakot, masaktan, masugatan, mabigo, magisa at mamatay sa sarili. Ngunit kakatwa, sa likod ng aking pagiging duwag at paglayo kay Jesus, sinundan niya ako, inalalayan, hinawakan ng aking kamay. Dito ko naramdaman ang kanyang pagkalinga, naramdaman ko ang kanyang kamay na sugatan. Ngunit mainit, kamay na gasgas na sa paghahanap ng mga duwag na katulad ko. Mga taong kulang sa paniniwala, matatakutin, makasarili at makasalanan. Naramdaman ko ang higpit ng kanyang kamay. Mainit, mapagmahal, hindi nang husga, mapagpatawad. At sa kanyang maigpit na paghawak, naramdaman ko rin ang kanyang takot sa krus. Ang takot na mamatay. Ngunit sa likod ng lahat, mas nanuot sa akin puso ang kanyang pagmamahal sa akin. Gagawin ni Jesus ang lahat sa ngalan ng pag-ibig. Handa siyang mamatay upang sagipin, patawarin at mahalin ako. Ito ang nais niya. Buo ang kanyang loob dahil buo ang kanyang pag-ibig. At nang maramdaman ko ito, naramdaman ko ang pagbabago ng puso ko. Nabuhayan ang loob ko sa kanyang pag-ibig na walang inaasahan. Nakapalit. Dahil dito, unti-unting nabuhay ang aking puso na sundan ang kanyang yapak. Totoong-totoo, mahirap makita ang Diyos sa panahon ng kadiliman at pandemya. Ngunit kakatwa, sa likod ng lahat, may nakatagong liwanag ang anumang kadiliman. May nakatagong buhay ang anumang kamatayan. Hindi nang iiwan ng Diyos. Nandyan siya, katabi natin. Kailangan mo lang magtaya, maghintay, magpaubaya, at mamatay sa sarili. Bahagi ng dilim ang takot. Piliin mo lang umibig. Ipikit mo lang ang iyong mga mata at tumalon sa kawalan. Magpakatapang at sasaluin ka ni Yesus. Holy darkness, blessed night, heaven censor hidden from our sight. As we await you, O God of silence, we embrace your holy night. I have tried you in fires of affliction. I have taught your soul to grieve. 
seek you and gently take you with me and bring you
We have seen the Lord. Imagine the deep sense of joy that the first disciples must have felt upon realizing that it is the Lord, the reason Christ appearing before them, allowing them not only to recognize Him, but also to touch Him and even share the breaking of the bread with Him. Just as when they thought that everything was over, came their beloved Jesus in flesh. How their grieving must have turned into rejoicing, how the fear and pain they felt must have turned into a consoling assurance that the one they love and who loved them dearly has come to life again. In the fourth week of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, one is asked to beg for the grace of intense joy and gladness with Christ the risen Lord, knowing that by His resurrection, death is not the last word but life, and life in its fullness. The experience of joy, though, was not something instant for Jesus' disciples. As we could see in most of the resurrection appearance stories, they have lost heart, deeply sudden and uncertain about their future. But when Jesus appears, He dispels their sadness, filling them with hope and giving them comfort. Such is the presence of the recent Christ. It is one that consoles, it is one that transforms. Yet as we experience His consoling presence and transforming love, we are also being asked not to cling to, but to move from the familiar to the unfamiliar and share in His mission. From joy to transformation to mission. As St. Ignatius himself said, love ought to manifest itself more by deeds than by words. Words are not enough. Love must be put into action. The contemplation to attain love invites us to envision how we can choose to love the God who loves us first. We look at what God has given us and how we can freely offer it back to Him. All is gift, and God is the great giver of gifts. He has given us our life and all that we have. Above all, He has given us His only Son. What can we do then for God in return but to give back to Him in love all that He has given to us? May we have the grace to pray with all our heart St. Ignatius' very own prayer, the Sushipe. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me, to you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace that is enough for me. Only thy love and thy grace. Above, 
way It is really I whom you see I offer you now my peace I have waited for this moment To be with you again In my heart you'll remain In your heart I'll stay I am with you Till the end of your days I am in you Have faith that I hold you Even when you let go When I love you You must know Yeah. 
Before we end, on behalf of CIS, let me thank you for sharing this special night with us. Special thanks as well to Jesscom and their father Nono Alfonso SJ, the production team, those who read the spiels this evening, the Himiga Suita and friends under the direction of Father Arnel Aquino SJ, and everyone else involved in this project. Thank you for sharing your time and talent. We cannot thank you enough. Maraming salamat po.